I'd like to, to dedicate this presentation to, should I start now? <laughs> the medium of comics in America has had a very troubled past considering its rightful place as a legitimate form of artistic expression. Due to short-sighted practices within the comics industry and within the comic book, um, basically as in mo uh, mostly limited to genres of superheroes and funny animal stories, only recently has the form began to garner the attention it deserves. Since the first comic featuring Superman, which was published uh, by DC Comics in 1938, the genre of the superhero has pretty much uh, been ruled, uh, has ruled the comics industry and permanently affected the American popular culture landscape. However, these power fantasies are dominated by depictions of heroic white males. This leaves almost no room for diverse representations regarding race, gender, and other social identities in the genre. Like all images that are uh, generated in, in American popular culture, the superhero has, long, has a long history of influences that have helped mold the genre over its nearly 80 year history. As a result, the first images of black people in comics were directly influenced by the images found in the racist yet extremely popular entertainment form of blackface minstrelsy. Uh, these racist stereotypes that you see listed here designed for very specific purposes that helped uh, shape perceptions and public policy concerning black people, and particularly the black buck or the angry black man stereotype, which was used to form uh, laws that restricted black Americans and validated violence against black men. These images are the antecedents of the black superhero. Uh, characters like Whitewash, uh, Little Black Sambo, Will Eisner's, Will Eisner's Ebony White, and a host of uh, savage yet silly black characters were all spawned by Reconstruction era stereotypes. Stereotypes are big business. They, uh, they, these simplified images, uh, excuse me, these simplified images strip away the internal character and sell form as fact, usually to the dismay of the individuals supposedly represented. In the early 1970s, on the heels of the civil rights movement, a new discovery was being made in Hollywood. It seems that black people would actually pay money to see themselves depicted in film. So black exploitation was born, and over a period of about six years, films like uh, Chef, Coffee, and Superfly burst into popular culture from the white imagination and pimped out style. The comics industry took uh, Hollywood's lead, and they attempted to increase profits by in introducing a few positive African-American uh, characters, the first of which was the Falcon, a reformed pimp named Sam Wilson. The character was Captain America's sidekick. Please note that the Black Panther, an African king turned adventurer, was the first black superhero, predating the Black Panther movement. The next African American superhero was Luke Cage, hero for hire. Like the Falcon, Cage had roots in the ghetto and the stereotypes and, and the stereotypes of black exploitation. Cage was wrongfully accused of murder, and in prison he's offered a reduced sentence for being a human guinea pig in an experiment. This event gives him superhuman powers, which he then uses as a mercenary. So basically, he's Marvel's chef, but with super strength. Not to be outdone, DC Comics offered up the next African-American superhero, Black Lightning. A uh, professional athlete turned uh, teacher, Jefferson Pierce, acquires a belt that enables him to generate and control high levels of electricity. This here was part of the trend of putting the word black in the character's name, just in case you missed that fact. <laughs> and what's up with the Afro wig? The Afro wig. All right. There are also supernatural characters like Blade and, uh, and Brother Voodoo who have created and seem to be renditions of the magical Negro or magical other literary trope. Also, these characters generally showed off the black body as commodity via their exposed chest, arms, and legs. Again, the fact of their blackness was made to be hyper-evident. Next up is um, Black Goliath, uh, Bill Foster, a lab, a lab assistant to the original Goliath, Dr. Hank Pym. Pym finds a method of changing his size and Foster uses his employer's uh, serum for his own adventures. Black Goliath was the first what I call a hand-me-down hero, basically a spin-off of a character that was originally a straight white man, but is revamped to maintain the brand but attempt to gain new audiences. Uh, this is a highly repeated trend and is practiced through uh, both race and gender. So Superman, Batman, Steel, Grand Le Green Lantern, The Atom, Firestorm, Iron Man, etc. There's a whole roster of characters that are just extension of white male characters. On one hand, it's good to show diversity, but what about the agency of the character to create their own identity, or their own stories? Um, this echoes how the identity of the other is constructed in an opposite uh, to, a, to a heteronormative model. Characters like Storm from the X-Men are shaped by hypersexualized stereotypes of the other, but also Eurocentric beauty standards, despite supposedly being from West Africa. Her blue eyes and platinum blonde straight hair are explained away as merely side effects of her mutation. 
Um, and an almost uh, textbook example is the practice of, the, is it the, of this practice are the 80s uh, characters Cloak and Dagger. Dagger is a beautiful blonde who is the avatar of light and can heal people like some kind of saint, whereas Cloak is a formless shadow demon guy whose power is to control darkness and literally suck the life from people. This metaphorical dichotomy is an example of how stereotypes construct myths around race and gender in our country. Uh, in the 1990s, there was a rash of change in the comics industry. Upstart Image Comics is formed by some of the top artists in the, in the profession and instantly becomes a competitor for Marvel and DC Comics. Tribe, an image comic by Stroman and Johnson, becomes the, hot, the biggest selling uh, title featuring characters of color. Bishop, a gun-toting mutant from the future, joins the X-Men. Um, Image Comics uh, introduces quite a few uh, diverse characters. The uh, flagship character, Spawn, created by Todd McFarlane, is, McFarlane, is uh, revealed to be a black assassin who makes a Faustian deal with the devil. As uh, Jim Valentino's Shadowhawk is also revealed to be a black man and, uh, and also a victim of AIDS. However, uh, some of these uh, characters come off as being gimmicks to help an ailing in industry during the tumultuous 1990s. Uh, several new imprints came from the 90s, like DC's Vertigo line, and also Milestone Media, a groundbreaking partnership that spawned multi-ethnic characters like Icon and Rocket, Static, Hardware, The Shadow Cabinet, and Zombie. The company was the largest, most successful publishing venture that features characters of, colors, uh, of color and attempted to show the true diversity of the medium. Milestone was formed by Derek Dingle, Michael Davis, Dennis Cowan, Mark D. Bright, and the late, great Dwayne McDuffie. Despite the, the short-lived um, success of the imprint, the, the founders went on to be major forces in the industry and continue, continued to push the envelope regarding diversity in comics. McDuffie, a writer by trade, wrote for the animated series Justice League, and more recently the Superman animated film uh, from Warner Brothers. The work of McDuffie and his colleagues inspired others to create independent comics with black characters. The Sims Brothers character, for instance, Brother Man, and uh, Tertiaire Only's Malcolm Ten were both uh, flashpoints for the underground black, comics, uh, black age of comics movement. Only's annual Black Age of Comics convention spawned a whole community which is now flourishing and inspiring creators from all backgrounds to make comics about their lives and their perspectives. The East Coast Black Age of Comics convention, uh, now in its 10th year, occurs in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania each year. The Glyph Awards are now given for excellence in depictions of black characters. And the online museum of uh, black superheroes collect and archive these characters' exploits. Learn more about this underground uh, comics movement in our book, Black Comics, African American Independent Comics, Art, and Culture. Thank you. That's my time. Oh, <laughs> oh,